We have one minute left. We will wait for another minute for people to join for this webinar. After we will start the webinar officially. In the meantime, those who are with us right now, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat panel as displayed on the screen. Don't forget to select everyone in your option when you're sending the message so that everyone can see who has joined us from which organization and what location. Hi, Julie. Welcome. Thank you. Great to have you with us. Yes, you are switched on. Fantastic. Um, we're just asking people who are joining us already to use themselves in the chat panel and where they're from. So, um, Keklik, we can't see you um, because everybody's um, videos are off, everybody's cameras are off, and um, sound is off apart from those people presenting today so if you are joining us and you can't see yourself you can't hear yourself that is why because we've got quite a lot of people coming today so we're keeping it as a webinar so just letting everyone know that that's um that's the case so that's the reason you can't see yourself yeah no there's definitely nothing wrong <laughs> Click. No, that's uh, yeah. So it's good. Good to remind everybody how it, how it's working for sure. Thanks for asking the question. All right. I think it's already one minute past two, so we will officially start because there is a lot to share with you guys on the project that we have gathered here today. <clears throat> Sorry, excuse me. So we will start officially. Um, just to remind everyone who have joined us now, please feel free to introduce yourself in the chat panel, your name, organization name, and location from where you are joining us today. Also, um, we are recording this session to be to me be made available to those who could not join us today, but are interested in knowing details of this project. But thank you all who have joined us today. I am Dura Shehwar. I work as a network support manager with Good Things Foundation. Um, we are all gathered here today for our Digital Sisters program. Uh, it's a new program through the platform of Good Things Foundation with our partner in this program, Host International. Um, this is basically an information session webinar. We will be introducing you to all the important information regarding this program. This is an opportunity for you to ask questions, ask for details, uh, type in, your, in our chat panel if you have any question. The whole team here who will be introducing themselves as and when they will be um, delivering the specific section of this webinar. You uh, can ask the question and all of us present here today will try our best to answer all your questions. If there are any questions left unanswered, we will definitely be getting back to you with the answers. And this is not the only opportunity to ask the questions. Um, we have multiple means and ways of getting connected with Good Things Foundation team where you can reach out to us and ask questions if there are any questions after this information session. Before we get into the details of the program, um, we like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land and pay our respects to elders past, present and emerging. We support action towards healing and reconciliation, including the Uluru Statement from the Heart, and voice to the parliament. Another reminder to introduce yourself and also don't forget to share with us from which land are you joining us and feel free to acknowledge the land and traditional owners of the land that you are coming from today. Right, let's get, get to the business. So what we are discussing today is displayed on your screen. We are hoping and aiming to talk about this program, how it works, 
what's involved in delivery of this program. Key dates, very important for you to know when we are starting, what will happen when. And then because right now the program is at initial stage where you're welcome to submit your grant applications, we thought it will be really helpful if we'll share some tips with you regarding submitting the grant application to be officially part of this program. So this is all we are hoping and aiming to cover in today's session. There is a lot to be covered, but before we share what we have to share from our end, tell us about you, um, about your program, about your community, and um, the. we would like to know about it through the poll that is displayed on your screen. Thank you so much, Flo, for sharing that. Take a couple of minutes, answer the question on the poll so that we know who we have with us today and where are we, what is our starting point basically? I know that you probably can't see it everyone it's Jess Wilson here from Good Things Foundation but I'm seeing all the numbers come up um, behind the scenes and we'll share them in a minute um, so just another second before before we start to share I reckon yeah it's always fascinating to see who's answered what question yeah Right. 10 more seconds, do you reckon, DS? Yeah, definitely. I actually can't see the answers as a panel. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's do it. Right. I can't see the answers. So if Jess, I can I request? Oh, no. I think yeah, we're, no, yeah, I think we share, have we shared them now? We're good yes. to go? Great. Yes, we're good to go. Thank you so much. All right. So, um, the first question about uh, if you are already part of the network as a network partner organization, and if you have signed up, um, 18 out of 33, like almost 55% of our participants today, half of you are already part of the network, which is great. But those who are not sure are also 40%. Don't worry about it. We can always check in our system if you are a network or not, if you have signed up or one of your colleagues have signed up your organization. 3% of you are still not part of the network. Don't worry. Again, our support team and overall team is here to help you and support you through that process if you want to be part of this program. Because if you want to be part of this program, you have to sign up with us as network partner. Join the whole network and then we part of this program. Um, how experienced are you or your organization with getting uh, helping people with getting online or helping them with digital skills? Again, 55% uh, of the organizations are very experienced with more than three years of experience. And then there is um, there are some moderately experienced with 33%, 12%. And there's none that does not have any experience, which is good. Uh, all of the organization here today have some kind of experience, but don't worry those who have just started or something. Again, it's a journey that we all can start together from scratch and we are here to support you in that. Uh, about how experienced are you with refugee or migrant women? Glad to know that six, almost 60% of the organizations are the ones who have some experience or very experienced with helping refugee and migrant women who are the target group of this program, basically. That's why we are asking this question. Um, who have not worked at all are 6%. So it can be start of something new from your organization platform. This is you to decide after looking at the information of this program. And how familiar are you with Good Things Foundation work and support? 15% uh, are not familiar at all. Again, uh, I think this will be a good opportunity to start that um, collaboration or work together with Good Things Foundation. You can always reach out to ask us and ask questions. 
rest of the organization are pretty much in some capacity uh, familiar with Good Things Foundation, our work and the support that we offer to our network. Right, this is a good starting point for all of us. Let's start from the scratch. And again, a reminder, if you have any question, pop it in the chat panel and we will answer it for you. Just a reminder that everyone in Australia has the right to have access to affordable digital technology and the skill, and also the confidence to use it. But we all know that this is not the situation currently. Um, we would like to be here, but this is our this is where we are looking at. But this is not where we are as a nation right now. Uh, I will now like to invite Jess to start to talk more in detail about it and introduce our audience to where we are standing right now. Thanks, DS, and hello, everybody. Um, I introduced myself briefly before, but I'm Jess Wilson, the CEO of Good Things Foundation, and I am so excited to be here today. Um, really thrilled that we've got so many of you joining us online. And just want to acknowledge that I'm coming to you from Gadigal country today. Um, this is where the Good Things Foundation offices are um, and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, I noticed that we've got a couple of questions. We've got somebody that's put their hand up. So maybe Claire, if you have a question, maybe pop it in the chat panel. It's a bit easier for us to, to answer. Um, just just let you know if there's a few of you online that have not um, heard about Good Things Foundation before and know some of our, our work. So just a quick brief um, focus. Our focus is on improving digital inclusion across Australia. We have a multiple programs. We have the Be Connected program. We have a Bridge program. We've had digital health programs. We have Get Online Week. So we have multiple different programs that you can be involved in. So if you haven't seen any of our programs before, all of these for aim to teach digital skills, train people in the community to support others, run campaigns that are around um, learning and in community engagement. And we also have um, loan devices grants as well that support people to access those devices when they can't already. And the reason that we do that, if you shift to the next um, slide, thanks DS, um, the, um, is that we know that one in four Australians are digitally excluded. So that's one in four people who don't have the skills and confidence that they need to actually participate in the country, in, in our country today. Because as we know, so much of our world is online. Um, and those are for three key reasons. From access, because they don't have the tech or the access to the internet that they need. They can't afford it because it costs quite a lot. It's a significant amount of money to buy a device, to have the internet. Um, or they don't have the confidence and skills, the ability um, that they need to be able to fully participate. Thanks, DS. Oh, just go back one. Um, and what we know is that, that uh, there's the people that are more likely to be digitally excluded are these ones that we have on the screen. So um, women on low incomes, unpaid carers, people who are dis with disabilities, people who are new migrants and refugees, and women who are over 65. But actually in general, in Australia, 61% of us feel like we have lack of confidence in identifying misinformation online. So that's a significant number. And and as tech continues to change, as it does so very rapidly at the moment, we want to make sure that nobody is left behind, that everybody has the same ability to connect onto, into the services that they need, to connect with their kids' schools, to be able to um, apply for a job. All of those different things are really essential. And we actually know that refugee migrant women are more likely to be digitally excluded. And it's kind of where we've come to today. And I'm really thrilled that um, we are working in partnership with Host International. And I'm gonna hand over to Julie to introduce herself in just a second um, to do this brand new program. So can we shift to the next slide, DS? Thank you, lovely. It's been funded by the Department of Social Services and it's a 12 month pilot. So we have a lot to do in 12 months. And our whole focus at Good Things Foundation is how we build capability in community organisations that are on the ground who already have access to those people that need this support and help them to do it in the way that they know best. So this, this fo focus of this program is to co-design and to deliver 
a digital literacy program for um, refugee and migrant women across the country. Um, but we're really thrilled because partnerships is, is core to what we do at Good Things Foundation. And so I'd just like to introduce Julie from Host. And maybe, Julie, you could do a little uh, intro about who Host is and, and why you're excited about this project well. All right, thank you, Jess. I am very excited about this project because it's our target niche audience that we have here at Host International. So it's um, bringing two great organisations together to support and benefit women, which is also another uh, a key topic focus for us. So at Host International, we support people who are displaced um, around Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Thailand and Indonesia. New Zealand, we have a program that supports families bringing refugees from other countries into New Zealand and supporting them once they're in New Zealand. And in South Australia, we have employment access programs, uh, settlement support programs to help refugees and migrants settle, leadership programs, uh, and other humanitarian type things to support refugees and that settle in, uh, in Australia. So that's us in a nutshell, but really, supporting people live better, happier and in community. Fantastic. Thanks, Julie. And I think that's exactly right. It's about how we bring our different knowledge and skills together to create a program that is going to be benefit a benefit to women on the ground. Um, that's ultimately what we're here to do. So we're digital inclusion specialists and we want to so seek to work with um, other organisations that are already supporting refugees and migrants. And HOST has been brilliant in helping to design this program and for us to then deliver it in a way that's most useful. Okay, so the yes, I'm not sure. Am I am I are we am I handing over to you again now? If you want to oh, here we are. That's right. So we did, I mean, really just to confirm that together we're we're wanting to build um a, a digital confidence and um, connections in the Australian community to make sure that everyone has the essential skills they need to connect across the community, but also into the workforce. And just as a, a shout out, we have a lot of community partners um, that are part of our organisation already. And this one, this picture comes from the Indonesian elderly, Indo-Chinese, Indo-Chinese Elderly Refugees Association, um, who are in lots of our pictures. So um, already working with a lot of people around this space as well. Thanks, DS. Oh, welcome, Jess. So since we now know the background or the starting point of the program, where yeah, this program is coming from, with what vision and what thoughts, let's get to the details of um, the program. I can see in the chat panel that a lot of you are asking questions about the like practical details of this program. Don't think that we are not looking at those questions. I know Rupin and Flo are ans answering some of them in the chat panel. You will get a lot of these answers when we'll sh share these details. And we also have dedicated time towards the end of this session for question and answers. So keep popping in your questions while I'll go through the details and some of these questions will already be answered through these details, all right? <clears throat> all right, so Digital Sisters Program is the, as, as Jess and um, uh, mentioned that it is a digital literacy program for refugee and migrant women. Through this program, the network partner organizations who will be part of the program will have access to 20,000 plus GST funding to develop and run the program in your communities with this targeted group. It is designed to build digital skills, confidence, and connections. As we have emphasized earlier, how important it is to have access to have digital skills, but then also confidence and have access to right kind of people and building those connections. So these are the things we are aiming to focus on through this program. And it's a pilot program. Um, through this program, we will test this methodology, this approach, um, this program, and hopefully, if we achieve the, the objectives of this program, we have our fingers, toes crossed to get the continued funding and upscale this program to a bigger program. So we are all in it. This is a pilot program, but the results and impact of this program will help us 
uh, advocate for a continued support and funding for this uh, kind of support. Jess, do you want to add something? I just, I just wanted to add that um, I know there is a lot of questions coming in about the specifics of the details of the program. One of the things that's really important is that we're looking to co-design this program with the organisations that are participating in the program. So we may suggest what we think we might need, but actually we're really, really keen to make sure that we are designing this with you. Um, and with women who are accessing the program. So we won't have necessarily all of the exact details like we do for our Be Connected programs, for example, um, which we've been delivering for a number of years now. We're really keen for this whole program to be about learning together and making sure that we are, um, are delivering something that really is making impact. So I know I went on to a slide too early. Sorry, DS. No, no, that's absolutely fine. We are actually very systematically flowing into the right direction mm -hmm. where now we talk about how this program works. And a lot of people have been asking that just in the chat panel. So thank you for that. As mentioned earlier, Good Things Foundation team together with Host International are working together to co-design, to lead the co-design part of the program, provide the training, develop resources, and provide the funding to all of you, the grassroots level community organization who will then be implementing this program. The middle part of this, the, the diagram that you see is actually related to you guys who are interested in being part of this program. You will help us to co-design the program. We will not do it on our own. You are the ones who are the expert in the field. You are the ones who know these, this target group better than anyone else. So you will feed us with the information and suggestions and help us co-design the program, which will then help to reach out the right uh, targeted group. Along with that, we expect you guys to nominate or to bring in two digital mentors that Good Things Foundation and Host International team will then train as lead digital mentors and those digital mentors trained and provided with the right kind of resources will then go in the community and provide this digital support to targeted group of women. Through these two components, co-design of the program and digital trained digital mentor with the right kind of resources provided, we will then be measuring the impact that we will have in the community. And that then will help us to test if this pilot project is achieving the aim and objectives that we have set for ourselves in the start and will enable us to recommend a way forward for upscaling this program and continued support. So as you can see this through this diagram, it is very important that we all stay connected two ways of communication, talking to each other, developing the right kind of resources and support for the targeted group so that we ensure that we continue this support for our communities. Right. Going forward. DS, can I, sorry, can I just interrupt? Because I just wanted to introduce David Keegan. He's just arrived on our panel as well. He's the CEO of Host International. Um, so um, I, we've already introduced Julie, David, but I just wanted you to say it's brilliant to be working with you and the team at Host um, on this program. So just a welcome to David as well. Thank you so much, Jess. Welcome, David. Um, so continuing from what we just saw in the last slide about the two important components of the program, co-design and then digital mentors. We all know that those who have been working in communities, how important digital mentor component is for all our program, actually, the digital support program, regardless of it is the digital sisters or Be Connected or any other. Those are the people who actually connect with the community and deliver those skills or that that support which is required by community. So right set of skills, right kind of people are very important for this job. Um, through this program, we are also focusing on training them and equipping them with right kind of resources and skills. But you will be the one who will identify those mentors. You will be the one those the, that will nominate two digital mentors, each organization involved in this program. And then we, uh, Good Things Foundation team and Host International team will be training them 
and building up their confidence so that they can further go into the community and help people. Because we are focusing on refugee and migrant women and communities, it is very important that these people are relevant. And we all know that they become relevant when they talk the same language. So bilingual skills who are already women but with bilingual skills who are already working in the community would be ideal for this job. I don't need to tell you guys this, but you know that the people talking in the same language build the rapport really quickly and make the job really easy. Uh, those people, uh, th those digital mentors that you will nominate will attend three in-person training sessions. And these three uh, in-person training sessions are spread over the period of time. It's not like there will be three trainings in one month or something. Uh, throughout the delivery of this program, we will be delivering these three sessions and they will attend and they will be trained and given resources. They will have access to the support, resources and network. By that, we mean that they will be connected through with us uh, to help them through this journey. We will also provide resources and you, know, you will also be connected with each other through community of practice to share experiences and share skills. So that's how this model will work. It is a model based on communication, collaboration, and two ways, you know, sharing of information. Very important. Whoops. Right, a little more details on who can be a digital mentor. Um, as we said, your volunteers can be your digital mentors. Even your paid staff can be volunteer, uh, can be digital mentors if they are the ones delivering these trainings or support to the uh, community. It can be within your organization and those who have the experience of working with the community uh, because it's a time bound uh, support. It is very important the community have that trust building, trust within in their uh, digital mentor. Um, it makes job easy. You know all of this, but this is just a reminder to avoid any kind of confusions and ambiguity regarding who can be a digital mentor uh, and who you can nominate. DS, can I just can I just step in there just for some people who may not have been part of the programs before that yes. we've delivered around sure. digital mentoring, just so that we're really clear that can, you know DS has talked about the different people that can be a digital mentor. You don't have to be a tech expert. You don't have to be a teacher. You can be somebody that's already providing support to someone in the community who has a bit of extra knowledge around digital than they might do. And there's a lot of people who talk about how important it is that we learn together. We can't all know everything, but that's why the resources that we are then able to provide you with will help you to be able to do that. So if you haven't delivered this before, please don't think that you can't do it. Or if you didn't know what a digital mentor was, please don't think that you can't apply. But you do need to think about how you would then support people in your community, how you do that already, and then that, you know, what kinds of supports that you've seen they need. And um, so you may not have done that in a formal kind of digital mentor role before. That's right. Thank you so much just for that. That's absolutely right. Um, a lot of us are already doing that in communities, not necessarily you call it digital mentoring, but you don't have to be an official teacher or a trainer to be, to be a digital mentor. Um, the second component that we talked about was co-design part. It is very important because we want our, um, our resources, our support to be relevant and appropriate as per the need in the community. So, as, as participant organization, as network partner, part of this program, we seek your participation in co-design and resource testing. It will There will be a whole process um, led by Good Things Foundation and Host International Team, where the participant organizations will be called upon, like, you know, to be part of those sessions where we will together co-design, see what is relevant, what is not, what, what is the most useful approach and the resources. We will design that, we will test that, and we will also carry forward that information sharing, feedback, continuous improvement through community of practice meetings too. So we won't stop at co-design phase. 
it will be a continuous improvement uh, process because that's what all pilot project is all about in continuously improving and making sure what is working so we will continue this information share sharing through community of practice meeting where we will all get together you guys will share your experiences you will tell us and everyone in the group what is working what is not working what needs to be improved and all of that based on this this model learning resources will be curated and best practices will be recorded so that we in our recommendation of a way forward we know what works and what doesn't work so we are relying heavily on you to share your experiences with us and let us know what is most relevant for communities uh Diaz, can i jump in there yeah hi <laughs> Hi everyone, uh, and thanks for the intro before Jess. Uh, so I'm David from the CEO of Host International, and I'm sure Julie introduced before a bit about uh, what we do as an organization, but I thought I might just jump in here to explain a little bit more about this co-design piece and what we're looking for, because I think I can see that a number of you have been involved in the, the Be Connected program, and yes, we are drawing very much from the learnings from that program, but part of what we really want to get into in this program is not just to work out how we train a different audience, but it's also to really understand the barriers that women face. Uh, so one of the things we experience and one of the reasons why we wanted to work on this project with Good Things is because we see that in the migrant and refugee sector, uh, it's not intentional, but a lot of the resources and support do go to men. Men are generally the primary applicants in the visa process. Uh, many families will if they do get access to devices or digital support it will go to one person and so women are often secondary whether that be for cultural reasons or other reasons uh, in that process yet women are also quite critical as many of you will know to the information systems in community and the way that information is managed and processed i guess within families and so we really want to learn more about that through this process as well and how that we can make sure that uh, not just women, but all migrants in communities are, are digitally included. And that's everything from information and how they engage with confidently in the digital process to access to devices, to dealing with information and misinformation in the, in the digital space. And so the co-design process and what we're looking for in partners is people who can work with us in understanding that, getting that direct feedback, but also testing out and practicing uh, engaging with community, using the resources from Be Connected and adapting them as needed. And so we're really looking for not just people who can help us with training and um, delivering digital mentor programs, but also learning and adapting and developing an evidence base that will support further investment in this area of work. Uh, as many of you know, there's lots of support for the over 50 target, but we're trying to argue with the government and others for more resources in this space. And we, we're essentially looking for partners to do that work as well. So it's important that you think about that in applying for this work that you, you know, that we want you to be part of this process as well. Thanks. Thank you so much, David. Thank you so much for highlighting the importance of how important it is for women to be actually trained and, you know, um, brought forward because sometimes women are the group that is the last one to be targeted for any kind of such approach. But we know when mother or the women of the family is trained or well equipped, the whole, it trickles down in the family, it is automatic. So thank you so much for that. Right, so we now know how we will be starting, what will be happening at the planning stage, but what does support look like under this program? What is actually expected of those organizations who are providing this support in community? So for the organizations who will be running their support in community are required to hold information sessions in community. Those information sessions will be around digital skills, giving them confidence to be involved and come forward to get this support. But through these information events and the sessions, you are required, each one of the organization participating in this program is required to support 40 refugee and migrant women through the period, like through the whole uh, program time period. In total, which means when all the organization, 20 organization will be supporting 40 
women, each organization, we will be reaching out to 800 migrant and refugee women through this program, through direct support that we provide. We know that there are, as a result of this direct support, there are a lot of people who get indirect support and, you know, in the families that skill trickle down to the family level and community level, but direct support is provided to those 800 women. Can I just add to that, DS? I think that the reason that we had kind of community events in there as well as support was because we know how important it is to offer people the opportunity to, to learn something new in a safe space. And it may be that they wouldn't sign up to a program long term straight away. So we've seen through our, our work um, more broadly how important that kind of you know, giving people a taster or embedding it into some other kind of event that's already happening in the community can be. So, you know, and, and again, all of this will be, we'll be looking at this as part of the co-design process that as David was saying. So it may be that there is a, a way, you know, talk, you might talk in your application about the kinds of events that you could mm. include this in, um, but, uh, and then we can look at how that looks um, longer term once we've, once we've actually done the co-design process. Yes, absolutely. And I don't know if I'm right, going ahead of myself and if this is mentioned later on slides, I just can't remember, but just wanted to say that here that these 40 uh, women that you are supporting have to be between 18 to 50 years of age. That's the targeted age group um, that we are aiming to reach through this program. If right. you want to support people over 50, then you can apply for Be Connected funding. So this is that's definitely why this funding is for, for women only, and it's funding for those people between 18 and 50. Yes. But if you want to support others and you haven't already, then there's other grants available for you. Yes, for all those who do not know Be Connected about Be Connected grants, uh, you can always go to our website, which is beconnectednetwork.org. And on that website, we have a whole section dedicated to grants. And those grants aim to support people 50 years and plus. So those are always open. You can apply for them if you are targeting an age group above 50. Um, we here as Good Things Foundation and Host International support you to do these good things in community. And how do we do that? Our support to you people look like this on your, on your screen. So we are managing the funding available for this program. And each one of the organization who's interested to apply for the grants will have access to $20,000 to run this support in the community and we will be managing that. You can always get in touch with us for further support around that. If any questions, please feel free to uh, get in touch with us, but we are managing that. So we will make that available for you. We are also working on resources making available to you that will help you and your digital mentors to run the, the, this uh, support in community. As mentioned earlier, training will be delivered to digital mentors to give them skills, some tips and tricks and make them resources available to run this support in community. We will be working on developing peer networks through community of practice and otherwise through connecting with you guys, bringing you all together to share your learning and peer network where people can learn from their peer and you through your other organization, also learn and develop your program accordingly. So trying to focus on developing that peer-to-peer -peer support through this program also. We can all work together better rather than working in isolation. So let's focus on that through this program also. It's a program that um, is heavily dependent on co-design, all of us, coming together, sharing our experiences, what we know from our experience and developing the support that is most relevant and required in the community. So co-design is what uh, Good Things Foundation and Host International will also lead and enable all of you to share your experience. Uh, last, but very important, impact is what we will be looking at and measuring and recording. Uh, we will definitely need information from you 
to actually um, record all of that and develop recommendations and you know a comprehensive impact analysis at the end of the program. But we are heavily dependent on information coming from you through various resources. Um, but impact is what we will be looking at at the end of this pilot program to see if we have been able to achieve what we uh, set for ourselves in our in the objective of this program and what needs to be modified or if this approach is working or not and all of that. So this is where we will be working and providing support with um, at, at any stage. If you need to reach out, please reach out to us through our helpline and through our um, means of communication. Very important, working in the community is one thing, but making sure that we report whatever we are doing in the community and the impact it has is very important. Otherwise, continued funding, you know, adv advocating on behalf of those communities and for you to make the support available for you is really difficult for us and challenging for us. We need to report the impact for a continued support from government and from those who can support us in doing that. Um, please do record and share who you support and how it helped. We will in detail are in our grant guidelines and then in our contracts, we'll share how does that look, where you can report it, how you can record all of that. But all the stories coming to you, you know, every small little achievement that you see through this program, do not take it for granted. Do not assume, oh, this is something regular, you know. Record it, share with us, give us a call. Um, if you are not recording it anywhere, just give us a call and share it with us. And we make sure that we record it. But um, let's share the information of what impact this support has in, in have in community. Um, we will have a formal reporting and acquittal process that we will share with you through, through um, our formal means of communication but it is very important. I cannot emphasize enough how important it is to showcase the impact of the program for continuous support for communities. Anything, Jess, you want to add here? I would just add that um, because this is this is funded from the Department of Social Services, they have requirements of us um, around reporting um, that we we are still negotiating with them um, around exactly what that looks like and and the detail of that. But it will look like some information about um, the individuals that we're supporting and the impact that the program has had so um unfortunately we although we had a meeting with them this morning we haven't met, ha, quite had the the um the confirmation of that detail yet um but we will certainly do that as part of um as part of the the ongoing process and they are very aware that we need to make sure that that's um, finalised as quickly as possible. Um, so, and Jagbeer, I know you've just asked a question about DEX. That is exactly what we're negotiating with them about at the moment. So I can't tell you at the moment whether the information that we're recording here will go into DEX or not for this program. It is something that we're still negotiating. Right. Because we have a lot to share about, you know, how you can be part of this program where we are heading towards. So I'll quickly tell you who can be actually part of this program. Any organization registered with us as Be Connected Network Partner already or then registered after this information session or in, you know, before applying for the grant can be part of this program. Those who have existing connections with refugee and migrant women are ideal, obviously, because that's the target group. You need to uh, engage with this group. So you need to have experience of working with this group. Um, then we have a whole eligibility criteria and requirements listed in our grant guidelines. Please read the guidelines in detail to be aware of what you are committing before applying for the grant. And in order to know what this program requires and what this program is all about. It definitely could be you, but you need to be well aware of what this program is and what it requires before you apply for the grant guideline. My quick question to you would now be, after having an introduction to the program, we are going in details, uh, but are you keen to apply for the program? Here is the poll. So let us know if you are interested. We will have quick answers on this one. 
we are going into the details of how you can apply for this program. So don't worry if you are thinking, we do not know what is the process and all of that. By looking at the information, by hearing what we have shared up till now, do you think you want to be part of this program? A few more seconds to fill it in. I think we're pretty close. All right, let's end it. Hi. Brilliant. 70% of you said that <laughs> it sounds great and you want to be part of the program. That's what we want. Great. <laughs> 30% um, of you are not sure and still want to chat with your team, which is completely fine. Take back this all this information to your teams and talk about how you can be part of this program. But the good thing is 0% said that they don't want to be part of this program. That's what we want. All of you should have some intent to be part of this program. That's <laughs> That makes me happy. Right. Okay, some practical details. Before we go into the details of what grants um, look like, oops, uh, we want you to read the guidelines and terms and conditions very carefully. Those, especially those who say we want to go back and talk to the team and actually the 70 person who want to be part of the program, you need to read the guidelines if you have not done yet and read the terms and conditions carefully to be fully aware of what this program requires you as an implementing organization. Write your application using our project plan and uh, budget templates because that's what you will be required to upload on our system, on our online application system, and you go there. Please always make sure that you write your application on a separate document and then just copy paste it on the online system because what happens is sometimes when you directly start typing in on online a form, Sometimes it does not save it or something happens and you lose all the um, effort that you have made and you know time you have spent. So always write on a different document, just copy paste it online. Provide evidence of the work that you have already done so that we know that you have some kind of experience and you know, you know, having the relevant experience you all know always matters, makes it more interesting. Avoid jargons. Uh, we love jargons, but we all love jargons and uh, we love making things short, but, you know, sometimes we don't know what you're talking about. So, you know, spell it out for us. Imagine that we do not know anything about you or this work. So for to make it easy for us and for yourself, spell it out first time. Be very specific when you're talking about experiences. Do not talk about it in journal terminologies. Be specific with examples that are relevant to this kind of work. Use the full word count. We know that sometimes things can be said in very few words, but you know, make use of the, the words and the space that we have provided to you to tell us what you do. I'm sure you have a lot to say because you are working in communities. So make full use of that word count. Use the full budget. Do not leave. We want you to use that money. We know that you will need that money for this kind of support in communities. So think what you can use this money for what you will require to make it happen in community and use all the budget. Don't wait until the last minute to submit your application. We get that every time, even though that make us happy to see that you know, in the last day we have had 100 applications, but system do crash sometime. And then we have all those panic calls saying, oh, can you accept the word document of the application? Save yourself and us from that anxiety and plan well before time and submit that application. Ask us, get in touch with us. Any question is, no question is stupid question. If you are confused about anything, get in touch with us because it's a competitive ground, a competitive grant. So you need to put your best foot forward. Um, best of luck for your grant application. With that, I will hand over, I think Rupin, I have to hand it over to you to get more into details about the grant. Um, so over to you. Thank you, Diaz. Um, so we're gonna be talking about how you can spend your grant funds. But before I do that, I just wanna introduce myself. My name is Rupin Manjekin. I am the Grants Manager at Good Things Foundation, and I'm coming to you from Camaraya Girl Country. 
So on the slide, you'll see that we've listed how you can spend your grant funds. So you can pretty much spend your grant funds on, on anything you can, you can prove will help you deliver the project. Um, staff time, you might have costs for administration, project management, reporting, uh, voluntary expenses, uh, travel for digital mentors attending training or when delivering their digital skill sessions, venue hire and catering, advertising, if you want to take out some ads in your local community, local or community newspaper, um, flyers, posters, um, include those costs in your budget, printing and training costs, um, technology and internet. So if you can purchase some devices or pay for Wi-Fi to deliver your program, and remember that there is a requirement to host a, a information event as well with this grant. So please include all costs associated with hosting your event or events. Um, also with your budget, if there is any in-kind contributions in delivering your project, please list them in your budget as well. Um, and as you can see, you can't spend any of your grant funds on capital works or non-project related costs. Um, we'll move now to the next slide where we'll discuss the grant guidelines. Um, the grant guidelines, as mentioned earlier, and the application form are on our website, and we posted the link on the chat. Um, if you navigate to the grant program, you'll see the full range of grants available to network partners. Um, select Digital Sisters program, and you'll find the grant guidelines and application forms here. But please, while you're there, also have a look at our other programs. We've got Get Online Week grants and Building Digital Skills grants available as well. Um, so <clears throat> feel free to have a look at those programs too. Um, our guidelines are, are really helpful. Um, it will help you understand what is expected of you and will help you understand the type of applications we are looking for. Uh, one of the common mistakes people make is not reading these documents, so please read it. And of course, if you need any clarification or additional information, um, feel free to reach out to us. Um, the timeline for the grant program, um, to we jump into the next slide. Um, applications will open, are open now and they're closing next Friday. So as Diaz mentioned earlier, please, please don't wait till the last minute. Um, the results will be announced on the 26th of July. You all applicants will receive a written notification, an email on the 26th of July with the outcome of your application. Successful applicants will also receive a follow-up email outlining the processes to accept the grant contract and also how to get paid. Um, also, we, we, there's a short turnaround to when the grants are announced and the start of the program. So we do apologize for that, but please, once you receive your notification, accept your contracts and get your invoices into us as soon as possible. So we can pay you, we can get going with the project straight away. The grant term ends on the 30th of June. Um, so it starts on the 1st of August and during that period, it will include the co-design, the training and the delivery of the program. There is a final report that is required to be submitted with this program. It'll be due a month after the grant term ends. And of course, we will provide you with a report template um, well before the grant report is due. So I'll just pass you back to DS now and we'll go look at some questions. Yeah, thank you so much, Ruben. Um, all right, now looking at the time, we still have some time left. We want to share a bit of information around comms with you for which we have lovely flow with us. But before jumping on to that, are there any questions left unanswered related to this program um, after sharing all of this information? Flo, I might need help from you on identifying or copy pasting such questions that have not been answered. I could mm -hmm. see that Cass, who's lovely Cass, is also on the chat panel from Good Things Foundation, answering a lot of questions. Okay, Lauren has popped in a question, so I'll just um, read that out. 
uh, training. And can I just say, if you sorry, if we if you do have questions, rather than raise your hand, if you can put them in the chat panel because we we can't um, unmute you to speak. So, Uzma, if you have a question, please put it in the chat panel if that's okay. Thanks. Okay. So Lauren is asking about the digital mentors training, the outline for the training and requirement of time in the digital mentors training. Um, yes, can I pass on that question to you? I know that, you know, we've mentioned about two to three trainings and then the after core design, we will exactly have the resources available, but can you? Mm. Yeah, look, I think, I mean, as, as we've said, I mean, I know this sounds a bit like a cop out, but, it, but because we're doing some co-design, right, we are, we're not exactly sure the detail of, of everything um, that you might want to know a question to. But we do want the digital mentors to be part of three training sessions. And, and we're kind of saying that's, you know, a couple to start with and then one halfway through. And we know also that sometimes digital mentors drop off because they have other things that happen or people leave roles and things like that. So we want to make sure that there is the opportunity for people to reconnect in throughout this project to make sure that they, they are able to continue delivering the program across that full, um, full period of time. Um, I suppose the other key thing is that we are looking at uh, the development and of a community of practice. And so again, what exactly that form looks like, how often we meet is, is still for finalization. But, um, you know, we're really keen to, as Dia said already earlier, um, that, you know, to stay in touch with you, to learn from what's happening. Um, without getting in your way too much we also know how busy you all are it's not we're not trying to kind of um, be too intense about it but look at opportunities to come together to share knowledge and to be able to support each other so um so i know i know that's not a specific enough probably lauren for you um but i would say that at least three and then um some communities of practice ac across that period of time yeah thanks just for that i know there are a lot of questions coming related to the eligibility of the learners or the people who mm -hmm. can reach out through this program. I know that Flo and Cass have answered that the age group is 18 to 50 years of uh, people, women can be part of this um, program as learner. But then um, there are questions about what, uh, the, the visa status, like people on parent visa, tourist or refugee status can they be part of this program? And uh, Monica have asked actually, can we use this grant to mentor? Oh yeah, okay, sorry. Yes, the learner. Can they be on yeah. parent visa, tourists or refugees? I might have a go at that one, Jess. Yeah, please do, please do. I think I can understand a lot of these questions are coming from the fact that in this space, everything revolves around visa type. My understanding in this particular project is we don't have the same restrictions. I think what we'd be looking for across the 20 partners is to get a variety of different uh, engagements with different types of migrants at different points in the journey, with the focus being on more recently arrived women um, from refugee or migrant backgrounds. So that may or may not help you, but I don't want people to think that there's a particular fixed category of visas or types that we need to fit into. Um, I think there, there was some comments in the questions relating to, we, we will try to stick within the five year being the more recently arrived. Um, but I think we are looking for a variety of different types of engagement. So I'd encourage everyone to put in an application um, and to let us know who the people are that you're working with. Yeah. Yeah, brilliant. Thanks, David. Um, and I might just answer another question. I know that um, we've got um, a very small amount of time left. We've had so much to share. Um, but just in terms of where, who the type of organisational individuals that can apply for this funding. Um, so, uh, Veronica, you're asking a question around whether an individual works both in refugee and asylum seeking and is also a community leader. We're really looking for organizations or individuals who have you have to have an abn to be able to apply for this um so I'll, uh, if there's any other specific eligibility around that um rupin will answer it but we're really looking for a variety of different types of organizations so some of you may be community centers who have delivered digital inclusion digital literacy programs before some of you may be ref supporting refugees and migrants as your key focus and actually have seen that this is a this is a key thing for you to do some of you may be leading community 
um, organisations or support groups that are supporting people, um, women on the ground in a more grassroots kind of way. We're really looking at trying to have a combination of those types of organisations. So please do put in an application um, if you're interested. And if you have a specific question about a specific organisation or individuals, please, please get in touch with us so that we can answer that more in a more detailed way. All right. Yes, we have to actually one minute left, but I'll put you on a spot and give you a few seconds to actually talk a little about the training sessions that we'll be holding for mentors. Like there are questions about where those training sessions will be uh -huh. and which digital mentors need. Sure. You have so, so what I would say about the digital mentor training sessions um, and very, very quickly is that um, is that they will be all online. <clears throat> I wish they were face. <laughs> excuse me face to face oh now i'm going to be off but um but because this is a national program there's 20 organizations across then we will need to um meet, need to make sure that we're all able to join those together so they will be um virtual training sessions for sure all right thank you so um, what i'm going to what I'm yeah. going to say is that there's lots of questions still coming. If we haven't answered your question, please feel free to send us an email, but we will also develop an FAQ kind of document from this um, so that we can help you. Um, so please keep an eye out for us um, if you if you have any further questions um, around that and any responses on that. Yeah, um, thank you so much. Jess. Sorry for, you know, making your answer in a few seconds and, you know, just, but I think, uh, Keep your questions coming, as just said, and Cass had already shared our information details, but I will quickly hand over to Flo, who will talk about the communication channels and important information through which you can get in touch with us. Over yes. Thank you so much, all of you for being here today. I think the next one, you can scan these QR codes to be part of our newsletters. We are sending Fornally newsletter with different information about the grants, about different and important actualizations for you. And you can join our Facebook community group. It's a group just for our network partners where we can share information when we are also uploading information, videos, Q&A, and all the information that you need. Also there, you can see our phone number, our emailing. So get in touch with us. Thank you so much, everyone who has actually helped to deliver this information to all the wonderful people who have joined us today. I know it was an information packed session. Do not think this is your last opportunity to know about this project. As Flo shared with you, there are multiple channel of communication through which you can get in touch with us. Feel free to send us the email or pick up the phone and call us and ask information. We know you might have a lot of questions still unanswered. Um, read through the guidelines first. You will also get a lot of answers through those guidelines and terms and conditions. As just said, um, frequently asked question document will also be available on our website. So there is information still coming out there. Not I knew that somebody asked about specific details around core design and you know training sessions. We are still deciding on the dates. We will be communicating through that officially via email and newsletters and all means of communication. So keep on looking at those. Thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you have learned uh, important information and useful information about the program. We are really looking forward for you to join us in this program and make this change in the community. And then all together, we showcase the wonderful impact that these efforts make in the community. Thank you so much, everyone, Jazz, Julie, David, Rupin, Flo, and Cass on chat panel who have joined me and helped me through this session, and all of you who have participated and asked questions. Have a wonderful afternoon, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Diaz. Thanks, everyone.